When Jesus came to this world, he not only purchased our salvation and our healing, but he also established his church. In Matthew 16 and 18, Jesus proclaimed that the gates of hell would never prevail against his church. Although she has weathered many storms brought against her by Satan, the fact is that the church will fulfill her mission given by Christ. She will reach the whole world with the full gospel message. She will be in perfect unity. All believers will be gathered into her and every member will be perfected. What a glorious day that will be. If you're watching on social media, we invite you to comment along as you're watching today. We also encourage you to share our broadcast with your friends and your family so they can join in with us for this time of refreshing as well. Let's look back to the 1996 General Assembly when Granville Estep preached the third part. Immediately following this message, we'll hear Melvin Byers, former CPMA coordinator, preach, this is the Lord's doing to the 2007 General Assembly. The third part of what? Well, that be the third part of the No way, would it? Would that be the third part of the Bible? No way. Now I want to read the text. Let's listen closely. I'd like to relax and just let the Lord, just let the Lord use me like a telephone. Yes, yes. You know, you pick up your telephone and it just says what you want it to say. That's exactly what I want the Lord to let me say, just what he wants me to. I've been telling the Lord I couldn't do this. Turn to Zacharias. The 13th chapter and the 8th verse. And it shall come to pass that in all the land, saith the Lord, two parts therein shall be cut off and die, but the third shall be left therein. Now, in order to find out what those two parts, what those parts are, and a part of what we're talking about, I, the Lord has directed me to some words of prophecy. And it might be good for you if you'll uh, got you a pencil or a pen, and you'd like to just put these down, because I'll be going from one to another so fast. I don't believe you can do that. And the time you're trying to find it, you may lose something I say. And I want you to hear what I say. But just put this down first. Psalm 72. And Psalm 72. And let's get to the verse. Psalm 72, 16 and 17. It said, And there shall be a handful of corn in the earth on the top of the mountain, and the fruit thereof shall shake, shall flourish like the grass of the earth. His name shall endure forever. His name shall be continue as long as the sun. I want you to notice here it says, there shall be, speaking of something that's not already, but something that is to happen later. So I want you to notice that he said, a handful of corn, not a bushel, not a half a bushel, not a, even a pipe, but a handful. I want you to remember that. I'll be back to it. And it said it would take place on the top of the mountain. Then it says, his name shall endure forever. I believe he's talking about the church and Christ. 
Christ, of course, was already, but the church was to come into existence later. We go down to another scripture found in Isaiah chapter 2, verse 2 and 3. Several years later, he said, And many, and it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountain. Praise the Lord. Shall be established in the top of the mountain. And it shall be exalted above the hills. And all nations shall flow into it. And many people shall go and say, Come ye and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, and he will teach us his ways, and we will walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Another prophet speaks of the same event that's not going to happen in the top of the mountain. Let's move over to Micah 4 and verse 1. But in the last days it shall come to pass that, in the, that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established in the top of the mountains. But Moses, these were years between times. And it shall be exalted above the hills. The people shall flow into it. And many nations shall come and say, Come, let us go up unto the house of the Lord, unto the house of the God of Jacob, and he will teach us his ways, and we will walk in his paths. For out of the law shall go forth from Zion and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. We have three prophets speaking explicitly of this same coming event. Describing that it was to be to happen later and that it was to happen on top of the mountain. Now as I said, I'm going to take my time. I want you to get this. I believe the Lord's got something good here for us. This thing comes to pass several years later. Listen to this. In Mark chapter 3, verse 13, and he goeth up into a mountain. Can you say praise the Lord? And he goeth up into a mountain and called unto him whom he would. And out of them, and they came unto him, and he ordained twelve. I said he ordained 12, not 500 men. Oh, praise the Lord, and I feel something here. Not 500 men, not 50 men, not 20 men, but 12. A handful, so to speak. These prophets are all together on this, even though a number of years from time passed. One year later from that, Jesus was ready to build on that foundation. He had laid there in... Mark chapter 3. In Matthew the 16th chapter he said, Who does men say that I the Son of Man am? And they said, John the Baptist are one of the prophets. He, but he said, Who do you say that I am? And Peter said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. He said, Thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. The Lord was ready now to build on that foundation laid according to the prophets in the top of the mountain on Mark, Matthew, on Mark 13. Mark 3 and 13. Jesus was ready now to build that. Now, let's go to the Father. Let's go back to Zacharias again. Zacharias, and one shall say unto him, but boy, do that, I want you to notice this. 
Jesus have already come. The church have already been organized and building on the foundation. Now they come down to the crucifixion. And one shall say unto him, What are these wounds in thine hands? Then he shall answer, Those with which I was wounded in the house of my friends. Awake, O sword, against the my shepherd, and against the man of my fellow, saith the Lord of hosts. Smite the shepherd, and the sheep shall be scattered. And I will then turn my hand and do the... Then I will again turn my hand on the little ones. How many would agree with me that this scripture is talking about the crucifixion? Do you agree? Let's see your hands. Well, he's talking about the crucifixion. The church have already been organized and Jesus then have been crucified. Now what? Something else happened after the crucifixion. Listen what he said. And I will turn my hand on the little ones. Luke 12, 32. Fear not, little flock, for that's the master's good pleasure to give unto you the kingdom. Talking about the church. As Zechariah 13, 8 and 9. And it shall come to pass that in all the land, saith the Lord, two parts shall be, therein shall be cut off and die. Everybody say die. die. I'd like to say that again. Everybody say die. die. Two parts shall be cut off and die. Two parts shall be cut off and die, but the third part shall, I, shall be left therein. Two parts shall be cut off and die, but the third part shall be left therein. Left therein what? In the church of God. In the same teachings we always taught. In the same advice to members. And under the same theocratic government. Not change, not something new, but the church of God. Listen to what he said. I will bring the third part through the fire. And will refine them as silver is refined. Can you say praise the Lord? Praise the Lord. Notice what he said there. He didn't say I'm going to get them in the fire and leave them. But he said, I'm going to bring them through the fire. It don't make no difference to me about him to take me through the fire as long as it brings me out on the other side. Praise well, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I will bring them through the fire. And he said, I will try them. I will refine them as silver is refined. And I will try them as gold is tried. Listen to what he said. They shall call on my name, and I will hear them. Oh, praise the Lord. Church of God, he said he's going to hear us. I say he said he's going to hear us. He said we'd call on his name, and he said he's going to hear us. I'm expecting some great things to happen in the church of God. Well, praise the Lord. I will try them as gold is tried. They will call upon my name and I will hear them. I will say it is my people. And they shall say the Lord is my God. As gold is tried. The story is told of a man that said in his mind that he was going to find out about Ora. That he was going to find out all about it. He only could find out about it. So he goes to where they was blasting it out of the mountain. I said out of the mountain. Then he watches that oil as they bring it down and wash it. And then they put it in the refiner. And that refiner, the instructor says, turn the heat up a little more. Turn the heat up seven times more. And he did it until that gold was 
was running just like clear water almost. As thin as water. And then he heard him say, turn it up seven degrees more. And he said, oh my God, that, he's going to destroy that gold. He's going to destroy it. And the man said, no, he isn't. That gold is his. He paid a great price for that. And he won't stand it and be suffer one degree more than it takes to make it what it ought to be. Listen, we may go through the fire, but I want to tell you one thing. We won't have to suffer one thing a bit more than it takes to make us what we ought to be. The Lord hey, Lord, this church not having a spot of regular new such thing. I'm not worried too much about the fire. Praise the Lord. I believe the fire's already burning. I'd like to bring another picture. I'd like for you to go with me back to Gideon. Seventh chapter of Judges, verse 1 through 10, I believe it is. I'm not going to read that, but I'm going to talk about it. The Lord said, Gideon, Gideon had an army of 32,000 people. The Lord said, Gideon, he said, the people's too many. He said, all them that's fearful, let them go back home. Friend, a coward in the service can't find no place. We're going to have to stand for what we believe in. We may get some blood drinking down our back some of these days, but we're going to have to stand for what we believe in. Can you say amen? One thing to talk about, it's another thing to stand for it. Out of them 32,000, there was... 22,000 went back. The big majority. The big majority went back. The Lord said, get in the people still too many. You bring them down to the water and I'll try them. Get in, brought them down to the water and he tried them. How many is too many? More than two is too many. We got too many preachers in the church of God. We got too many members in the church of God. What are you talking about, preacher? I'm going to talk about this. When you get when all of our ministers gets to be one minister and all of our members gets to be one member, we're going someplace with God. And I believe with all of my heart we're going to get that. I believe with all of my heart we're going to get there. Amen. Paul wrote a letter to the church. 1 Corinthians 1 and 1 and 2. He said that he had to be back to the church of God and addressed it to Corinth. In that letter to the church, 12th chapter, 12th chapter and the 27th verse, he said, Now ye are the body of Christ. In the first chapter of the 10th verse, he said, I beseech you therefore, brethren, that ye all speak the same thing, and that, be, that ye all be fitly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment, and that there be no divisions among you. You say, preacher, you believe there's going to be a church without division. I believe with all of my heart. Amen. Amen. The Lord said, get in. All them that left water like a dog, you set them in one group. And all them that fall down and drink, you set them in a group. In these two groups, I see the majority leaving again. I see the concerned group in this. Uh-oh. I also see the unconcerned group. I see the unconcerned group just falling down and drinking all their food. They wasn't interested in what they, they wasn't interested in what was going on around them. They wasn't interested in what was going on or how many families they might cause to disagree or how many families they may split. How many people they might cause the backslide to be lost as long as they get what they wanted? Can you say amen? Amen. Well, I'm about to preach. I feel God. Please. But I 
I see the concern group. They take their water in their hands and left it like a dog and kept their mind on what's going on around them. They was concerned about the doctrine of the church. I said they was concerned about the doctrine of the church. They was concerned about the theocratic government. They were concerned about how many people was going to be lost or saved. They was concerned about the doctrine of the Bible. God said, get it. You take that little group. Brother Pruitt, take that little group. Praise God. Hallelujah. I'm looking forward. Woo! It's not going to be a little group very long, but well, they're going to come swiftly unto us. I'm looking forward. And I praise God for it. You say, where does that place us, preacher? That places us in a little short space. But let me get the high pitch for this. Two parts we cut off. Now, if the crucifixion was already passed, the church was already organized, and the crucifixion was already passed, and then he said, and then, that puts it after the crucifixion, two parts shall be cut off. But the third part shall remain therein. Did you realize that that placed it in the New Testament church? Did you realize that that placed these two cuttings off in the New Testament church? Can you say amen? Amen. Well, if so, when did it happen? It couldn't have happened all at one time because the book said two parts. And then it being two parts, that meant a space between the first part and the next part of it cut off. You say, preacher, what are you talking about there? I'm talking about God showed me, and I believe he will to you too if you'll let him, that in 19 and 23, one part was cut off. In 19 and 9 and 9 and 1, another part was cut off. And praise God, the church remains there in the same doctrine. Why, it's an unfolding right before our eyes. If we couldn't see that, we've got to be blind. Now that puts us, where does that put us, the church of God? That puts us in the short space between the last cutting off and the rapture. What do you mean, preacher, short space? According to prophecy, I say a short space. Jesus prophesied and said, as it was in the days of Lot, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man. In the days of Lot, there was the biggest outbreak of Sodom and homosexuality that had ever been in history. Right. Uh-huh. right now, in the day wherein we're living in, we're living in the biggest outbreak of God, homosexuality and Sodom that's ever been known. Amen. We are living on the threshold of the rapture, can you say, baby? I said we were. Well, praise the Lord. I said we were living. On the threshold of the rapture, lift up your hands. Lift up your hands. Your redemption draws nigh. Oh, glory! We're getting ready for something. we've got our work cut out for us. The Bible said he sent the ministry in the church for the perfecting of the church. we got a job to do. And we better do it with wisdom and the knowledge of God. Can you say praise the Lord? You say, preacher, 
how do you be able to tell which group is the real church? But don't you think that they'll all come back together someday? You ever hear that? You ever hear that said? You mean my first wife died? She's come back to me. How do you tell who's preaching the whole Bible right to the Bible? Who's still preaching the same doctrine, the same teachings, the same government we always did? Where is the Holy Ghost setting his approval on? I have a little church where I've been pastor and I give it up the last of July. But just a few days, weeks ago, we had three messages, interpretations. The Spirit falling all the time in every service we have. The Spirit of God is falling. Somebody told me the other day, said over at our church, the preacher said he couldn't get anointed. He couldn't get, he couldn't preach. He just couldn't feel the Spirit. Brother, let me tell you, if you want to feel the Spirit, go where it is. had a cloud that got them by day and a far that got them by night and that's the only direction they had and if that far didn't move they didn't go if that cloud didn't move they didn't go but when that far moved they moved and when they, and the cloud moved they moved but I want you to know one thing we've got to move when the spirit has moved somebody said I'm looking for the spirit well praise the Lord go where it is I get my life and the crowd mixed up. I don't know which one I'm doing. I'm having a time of my life. Get your microphone. Praise the Lord. Yeah. What do you do with the microphone? I said we've got to work cut out for us. We've got a job to do. We better find our place and stay in our place. Can you say amen? amen. Jesus said... St. John 20, 21st chapter. Jesus said he was interviewed and instructed Peter. And he said to him, he said, Peter, son of Jonas, love thou me? He said, yes, Lord, I love you. He said, feed my sheep. Then again, he said, Peter, uh, Simon, son of Jonas, Love of them, he said, Yes, Lord, you know I love you. He said, Feed my sheep. Then he said it the third time. He said, Simon, son of Jonah, love of them, me. He said, Yes, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. He said, Feed my sheep. God had given him a job and he was expecting him to do it. But Peter turned to looked at another fellow minister and he said but what about this fellow what's he going to do Jesus said what's that to you what he's going to do do you follow me you let that other fellow do his job and you do yours now you'll what the other fellow does. You've got to let them your job up. Oh, you know, all you remember about that was not that Say it. Feed us, preacher. Feed us. Come on, say it again. Feed us, preacher. Feed us. Feed us. Feed us. Whatever you've been calling to do it. Last year to pastor a little church. And I every now and then I would trust another minister 
the Sharma poor pit, to feed my sheep. But I sat pretty close around, and I listened to everything was said. <laughs> and if he'd start feeding my sheep something poison, I'd raise right up right there and said, don't you eat it, sheep. Don't you eat it, that's poison. That'll make you sick. You said, well, you gonna embarrass him? If you done such a thing, he ought to be in there. <laughs> well, I praise the Lord, I feel good. <laughs> if I'd have took time out of that church, <coughs> put in an investigation on my state over here, and I believe I've got one of the best that did anyway. Yes, sir. I said one of the best. Yes, sir. If I took time out of my work and tried to investigate the state overseer and try to run his job, you know what I've done? I've got in trouble with the preacher and God both. And both and Moses and Moses and Aaron tried to put Aaron Aaron and Aaron tried to investigate Moses' job and get to do God himself. God all left us in the break. What's that to you? How the other person does his job? You do yours. I remember I took her. She got saved, sanctified, baptized her, ministered to the covenant, and a year or two later, somebody told me said she's put a ring on. I wait a few days. They tell me that back in the early days, the shepherds, when a wolf got among the sheep, they wouldn't start no big poo doo and stir up everything. They would just watch that wolf, and keep that scare ready, and when they got a chance without disturbing the sheep, they let that old wolf have the throat. But a few days I went over, wife and we did. We fellowship with her. We had a prayer, good prayer with her. Then supposedly get ready to go, I said, Sister, you plan on going on with the church? She said, oh yes, Brother Estelle. I said, what about your ring? Oh, somebody might say you shouldn't have mentioned that. But we're getting ready for the rapture. She said, well, I'll take it off. She said, my daughter bought that from a Christian, Christian put it on my hand, I kind of forgot about it, it's still on. She said, I'll take it off. I said, that's sufficient. I never had one problem. Ministers, we want to dip them problems in the bullet before they get too far gone because the Bible said a little left left with a whole lot. Can you say amen? amen? But you got to do it in the right spirit. If we'll take care of our job and leave the rest to the proper authority, oh, God's going to bless us. Amen. Amen. No, I don't mean to be meddling. But I'm interested in the church. If I begin, and I say this from my heart, if I if I'd walk away from that little church, neglecting it, and start scattering discord among the churches, and then I got dealt with over it. How in the world could I say I, I was mistreated? <laughs> Should I be left there until it destroyed the people of God? Come on. Let's say praise the Lord. God help us. The third part. Yes, friends, it's the church of God. Hallelujah. I love the church of God. Jesus purchased it with his own blood. And he's not going to suffer us one bit more heat than it takes to make it what it ought to be. That's right. He said he purchased the church with his own blood. I'd like to say one more thing. I'm going to quit the thing a little early. You know, on this train, on this train, I'm afraid sometimes we get 
Too many engineers, not enough farmers. Everything got real quiet. <laughs> My mom used to, Jesus said in the fifth chapter of Ephesians that it would become about by the washing of the water by the word. Amen. My mom was a good washwoman. And I had to help her. Happened to be the only one about the right age. She'd come to wash today, she'd say, son, we had a big three bushel kill. Dad had it fixed up where he could build a fire under it. We had about a three bushel kettle. She said, go down there and fill that kettle up with water. Put plenty of fire under it and get it going. And I did. And after a while, she'd come down with a load of clothes. And she'd lay those clothes down and then she'd dip out some of that. But first, she'd cut off some of that old homemade soap in that water. Let it melt up. Then she'd take some of that hot water and pour it out, dip it out in the tub. Sometimes with the old big barrels cut into to make the tub. And mom pour that water out in that tub, and then she'd put them white clothes in that in that tub. And she'd start that old washboard and she'd get rub them up and down and rub them and rub them and rub them. And she'd finally get the general dirt out of them. She'd stack them over here. Then when she got, she told me, those said, keep the fire going. And she put them clothes over in that three bushel kill. Now, you, some of you never seen that. You never washed that away before in your life. But mom did. We didn't have a washing machine like that, man. A lot of that. Anyway, she said, keep that fire going. She put them clothes over in that big kill. And she said, son, put the fire to it. Sometimes I thought she was going to cook them tender. <laughs> she said, son, put the fire to it, but she don't have much to fire to put to it. And she got, she got them clothes. She boiled them so long, and then she take them out, and she put them in the tub again, and she started rubbing. And she, this time, she'd raise up a piece of white cloth, and she'd look at it, Mom wouldn't hang nothing else, had a black face on it. She'd look at it, and it had a spot in the corner. And she'd get hold of that spot, and she'd rub some of that old light soap on it, and she'd put it on that board, and she'd start going up and down that board with it. And sometimes she'd have to get it, you know, and sometimes she'd get it between her fists. You ever see anybody do that? She'd get it between her fists, or she was determined. But there wasn't going to be no spots in that washing. Then she'd put it through the rings. How much she hung it on the wire. Everybody coming by, she left the spot. Everybody come by, see that spot the first thing. The Bible says spots in your feast when they feast with you. These spots has got to come out. We get ready for the rapture. I said we get ready for the rapture. It's going to be without spot or blemish or any such thing. Then mom didn't stop with that. The Bible said not a wrinkle or any such thing. She'd put the old stove arms on the arm and I'd put fire in the stove, get the stove hot. She'd take that old stove arm. She'd, she'd pick it up. Make a spit noise. She, that's hot enough. And she laid that clothes on that old iron board. She set that hot iron on that. Now you want to see them high places get low, get low, and them low places get high. Right. Heaven now, Lord. The spots has got to come. Yes, Folks, every jealous spirit, Amen. every lying spirit, Amen. every evil spirit, Amen. every exalted spirit, Amen. every hating spirit, Amen. every enemy spirit, Amen. it's got to come out of the church of God. I said, it's got to come out of the church of God. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. Amen. That he might present it to himself. A glorious church. 
not having spotted wrinkle. Now, the third part of what? What? The third part of what? The third part. The church of God. They went out from us, so says John. <laughs> chapter 2. 1 John chapter 2. They went out from us. But they were not of us. If they had been of us, no doubt they would have continued with us. But they went out from us that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. Since that's talking about us, let me say it this way. They went out from the church of God, but they were not all church of God. If they had been church of God, they no doubt would have continued with the church of God. But they went out from the church of God that they might be made manifest. God truly intended that such spirits and such things would not exist in the church of God. And he just, hallelujah, he just cleaned up the church, getting ready for the rapture. Shake hands with somebody. Say so you feel like you can go all the way. I feel like I can go all the way. You look at the whole shake. Jesus coming after the church. God bless you. Psalms 118, verse 22 and 23. Jesus becomes the head of the corner after being refused is in fulfillment of prophecy. It's in fulfillment of prophecy after Jesus was refused that he become the head of the church. The stone which the builders refused to become the head stone of the corner. As I said, this is in Psalms 118, verse 22. The psalmist David declared, this is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the Lord's doing. The scripture says, except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord builds the house. Praise the Lord. The builders refused him. They did not want him. But the psalmist David said that God made him the head. The corner of the church. And it was his doing. This is not our doing. This is his doing. Praise the Lord. Sometimes we think it's our doing. But it's not our doing. It's his doing. It was his desire that his son, Jesus Christ, be the chief cornerstone. Praise the Lord. The builders didn't want him. They refused him. But the church of God of today have to be careful that we don't refuse him. 
Amen. And that we get into a building program. Amen. We must allow him to build the church of God. Yes. It's his doing. The scripture says it is marvelous in our eyes. I think he's referring to the last day's church of God because the builders didn't want him but it's marvelous in our eyes. Praise the Lord. Is it marvelous to you that what the Lord has done with the church of God? Amen. Praise the Lord. See we, all we have to do is let it be the church. Just let it be the church. Listen. It is marvelous when we understand the importance of the cornerstone. It becomes marvelous in our eyes when we understand the importance of the cornerstone. Praise the Lord. Do we understand that importance? Do we understand how important the cornerstone is to the church of God? Praise the Lord. It would not be a church without the cornerstone. Ain't nothing else here in here is as important as the cornerstone. Amen. Praise the Lord. Not one member. Not one member. Not one official. Amen. Not one pastor is as important as the chief cornerstone. And it must become marvelous in our eyes. The cornerstone is the first stone. And all other stones are placed in after it. The first stone that's placed in the house is the cornerstone. And all other stones are placed in after it. Praise the Lord. The cornerstone is the preeminent stone in position and power. It's the preeminent stone in position and power. Praise the Lord. That refreshing that we just felt came from the chief yeah. cornerstone. Hallelujah. Amen. That moving and that quickening that you felt was the chief cornerstone. Praise the Lord. Amen. Preeminent in position and power. That's right. Hallelujah. And before all, and he is before all things, and by him all things consist. You hear that? He is before all things, and by him all things consist. Praise the Lord. He's the first in the corner, first stone laid, and everything else consists right. by him. Yes, it does. Amen. Everything consists by him. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. He is the most important part of the church. Right. That's why he's first. He's the most, he's the, uh, the highest, the greatest part of the church of God. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Amen. He's superior in power, authority, and position. Listen to what he says. And he is the head of the body. The church. Who is the beginning. The firstborn from the dead. That in all things. Not some things. Not a few things. But in all things. He might have the preeminence. 
Right. Amen. Huh? Yeah. Amen. That he might have. Right. Not me, not you, not the general overseer, but that he might have. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Preeminence over all things. Right. Hallelujah. For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. Colossians 1, 17 through 19. Do you understand that scripture? God, it pleased him. It pleased his Father. Yes. This is why the scripture said in Psalms, it's the Lord's doing. Because uh -huh. he did what pleased him. And it pleased him to give his son the preeminence. And everything that consists, consists by him and him alone. Yes. Praise the Lord. Bless him. Bless him. Hallelujah. Glory. All the power, all the authority exists in the corner. Praise the Lord. All of it is in the corner. Praise the Lord. Whenever we are blessed and we lay hands on somebody and somebody is healed, it came from the corner. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It didn't come from you. Amen. It didn't come from me. It came from the corner. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yes. We have to keep looking to the corner. Because yes. God said it pleased him. It pleased him. He was in the beginning. He was the firstborn from the dead. Everything that he did, he was the first. He was the first. Praise the Lord. So that all preeminence would be in him. Amen. None of us been crucified. None of us hung on a cross. Right. None of us went in the graveyard and rose again. Amen. Not a one of us. But because of that, you and I just felt the mighty presence of a mighty God. Hallelujah. Because he rose again. Right. Praise the Lord. So that you and I could be saved. And how do I live? I live because I consist in him. Not on my own, but in God I live. Yes. Amen. Praise the Lord. All things consist by him. There is an old saying. The proof is in the pudding. I know you heard that before. Praise the Lord. You say, how good is it? Proof is in the pudding. Uh, only way I can know I got to taste it. Praise the Lord. And when I taste it, the proof should be there. Praise the Lord. Look at what Peter says. Peter proves that it is in the church, in the corner. Praise the Lord. Listen to the scripture. Be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, who you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him does this man stand here before you whole. This is the stone. This is the stone which was set at naught of you builders, which has become the head of the corner. Praise the Lord. Hmm? The man that they had made at the gate was now standing there whole. 
And they were wondering about what power. What power was this man standing here? What power had made this man whole? Praise the Lord. And Peter took him back to the fact that this is the same one that you crucified. This is the same one that you rejected. This is the same one that you did not want. Praise the Lord. He is the cornerstone. Praise the Lord. See, the proof is in the corner. The proof is in the corner. Hallelujah. Peter wanted to understand who did this. It wasn't none of I. I, I. I didn't do it. I didn't make him whole. But it was the one you rejected. The one that's in the corner is the one that has made this man whole. Hallelujah. See, he's in preeminence, in position. He's God. He's God. And his position is in the corner. Hallelujah. And he's all powerful. Praise the Lord. We said I rose and I rose with all power in my hand. He didn't leave anything in the graveyard. He arose with it in his hand. Hallelujah. And this man is standing here whole because of the corner. Hallelujah. Neither is there salvation in any other. For there is no none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Hallelujah. All power. All power. Hallelujah. No other name. Amen. No other place. No other God. But the one that's in the corner that has the power to save. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes. Amen. Praise God. If you are saved this evening and this afternoon, it's by his power. Right. It's by his power. Hallelujah. You came to church one day a sinner. Right. And you cried out, Lord, forgive me. Amen. And you left out saved. Not by your power, but by his power. Hallelujah. And it's in the corner. We don't have to look for it. It's placed in the church. And it was placed there by his father in the corner. Praise the Lord. Everything that we need is in the corner. Uh, you see how important the corner is? You see how important the church of God is to you? Praise the Lord. Say, don't get churchy. Don't preach church. I got to preach church. Amen. I can't help but preach church. Hallelujah. Because if I don't preach church, I can't preach him. Because if I preach him, he's in the corner, then I got to preach church. Hallelujah. Amen. I, I cannot refuse to preach what's in the corner. Amen. Can't do it. I got to preach what's in the corner. I got to preach what's in the corner. No corner, no church. No corner, no power. Hallelujah. No corner, no life. Hallelujah. I'm a lively stone because he's in the corner. Amen. Hallelujah. It's the church of the living God because he's in the corner and he gives it life. Amen. Yes. Praise the Lord. He gives it life. 
on anything else, give the church life on him. Praise the Lord. Is that right? He gives it life. Listen. God's foundation is a sure foundation because Jesus Christ is the chief cornerstone. Because the corner is in place, every stone will be in line. Huh? Are you hearing me? Huh? Every stone will be in line. Is that right? Because we're going to line up off the corner. Huh? We're going to line up with his program. Uh, we're going to line up with his wants, not our wants. We're going to line up with his desires and not our desires. Hallelujah. See, there's going to be a death in the family. Oh, yes, it is. There's going to be a death in the family. Praise the Lord. And when that death takes place, I won't no longer be there. Hallelujah. I can't do nothing else then but obey God because I won't be there. I, I have a death in my life. Amen. Amen. And when we have a death, we be able to line up with the cornerstone. Hallelujah. The corner went out and prayed up in the mountain and told his father, Lord, if you will, let this cup pass from me if it be possible. Pray that prayer three times. But the last time he prayed, he said, nevertheless, nevertheless, not my will be done, but thy will be done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The church is going to have to say, yes, we are. Yes, we are. I want to line up. Yes. I, I, I want to line up with the corner. So Lord, not my will. Not my will. Not my will, Lord. Hallelujah. I no longer have a will. But Lord, it's your will. Hard thing to give up is your will. That's a hard thing to give up, isn't it? Something that you like to hold on to. My will. My will. But you see what kind of church we're going to have? When the only will that's in the church is the will of the corner. Hallelujah. It's the will of the corner. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yes. We're going to have a church when we allow the will of the corner to overtake us, to consume us, and we call, get caught up in the zeal of the corner. We won't have to worry about no workers. We won't have to worry about workers. We'll have workers by the grove when there's no more will. The reason why we don't have workers come on because we got wheels. Huh? Praise the Lord. When we lose our will, we'll have workers. Yes. Amen. That's it. That is right. There's nothing wrong with the harvest. The harvest is already ripe. God just waiting on some laborers. Hallelujah. Yes. 
Is that right? You say we're not growing and we're small because we don't have any laborers. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Listen. The church is built according to his plan. Not our plan, but his plan. And this is one building project that is very dear to God. You know why? Because he gave his own son for it. Yes, he did. Praise the Lord. Say we're pierced in the side. Out came blood and water. To do what? To purchase. To purchase. To purchase the church of God. Hallelujah. Is that right? Amen. He gave his son for that. And he's not going to sell for nothing less than you and I lining up with the corner. The building will fitly frame together where there is no division. Hmm? The building will fitly frame together where there is no division. Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing, and that be no division among you, but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind, in the same judgment. Amen. Praise the Lord. And what the same mind are we talking about? The mind of the corner. Oh, we'll be perfectly joined together. Right. Won't be no division among us because we'll have the mind of the corner. Yeah. And when we get the mind of the corner, it can't be no division. Amen. Because we'll be perfectly perfectly joined together. Praise the Lord. Amen. This is why it's marvelous in our eyes. Because with him being in the corner, going to be no more division after a while. Amen. Amen. Won't be no place for none in the house. Because we will be lined up with the corner. And we'll be perfectly joined together with the same mind. Is that right? Praise the Lord. I, I got a pastor that's in my state. And I, I told him I had to convert him. As soon as he got a black overseer, he got to learn how to eat chilies. He said, Brother Bias, I can't eat chilies. <laughs> but that's not what God's talking about when he said that we're going to be perfectly joined together. Hallelujah. He's talking about in the word, in the doctrine, in the teaching, in the loving. Hallelujah. And the care one for another. Hallelujah. When one member suffer, we all going to suffer. Hallelujah. Is that right? Because that's the mind we're going to have. That's the mind that we're going to have. We're going to have his mind. Hallelujah. And I, I can't help but feel right towards you. Okay. I can't help it. Because I have his mind. I have his mind. And I can't help myself. Hallelujah. Is that right? If I got his mind, I'm going to love Brother Evans. 
I can't help but love Brother Ammons because I got his mind. But Brother Ammons got ways I don't like. I don't have to love his ways, but I got to love him. Hallelujah. If you got an enemy, he said, love your enemies. You might not love your enemies' ways, but you got to love your enemy. Yes, amen. Hallelujah. We got to have the mind of Christ. Is that right? And you know what? We're going to have to have it because after a while, we're going to have so many different people from different cultures that don't act like you, don't look like you, don't talk like you. Hallelujah. Do you hear what I'm saying? Praise the Lord. I'm glad about it. I'm glad about it, church. Hallelujah. We won't be able to find a corner to sit in. Oh, you won't be able to find your little corner to sit in. Amen. Black folks won't have a corner. White folks won't have a corner. Hallelujah. Praise God. Everybody's going to have a corner. Everybody's going to be one in the body of Christ. Hallelujah. No matter where they come from. No matter what the economic standard is. They're going to be welcome in the body of Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, that's what's good about the church. Hold that's in the corner. Every bit of it is in the corner. Praise the Lord. Hmm? See, you can't tell the corner who to let in. You can't tell the corner who to keep out. Hallelujah. If they meet the qualifications. Brother Amos told in, in uh, IYC, if they're saved in the kingdom, they're eligible. To be in the body of Christ. Hmm? Praise the Lord. Huh? This is the church of God. The body of Christ. It belongs to the corner. Hallelujah. Listen. That was 1 Corinthians 1 and 10. But where there is division, the church can't grow into an holy temple in the Lord. And he said, and brethren, I could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. I have fed you with milk and not with meat. For hitherto ye were not able to bear it, neither yet now are ye able, for ye are yet come. For whereas there is among you envy and strife and divisions, are ye not come and walk as me? Praise the Lord. We have strife. We have envy. Because what? We are walking as men. Hallelujah. We're walking as men. It's time for us to lay aside carnality. And start lining up with the corner. See, carnality is not of God because none of it is in the corner. There's no carnality in the corner. Praise the Lord. Then where do we get it from? Where do we get it from? If it ain't in the corner, where do we get carnality from? Praise the Lord. Shouldn't be no envy in the church of God. Shouldn't 
shouldn't be in it. I'd rather be sitting where you were sitting than to be up here. Amen. Praise the Lord. It's nothing to envy over no position. Well, let me tell you something. Position ain't what you think it is. Amen. You, you got a false idea about position. Praise the Lord. I, I would better off as a pastor. Up until last year, I was a happy pastor. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I didn't have no desires to be up here. Had no desire to be a CPMA leader. No desire to be a state overseer. Praise God. Amen. In fact, I thought I'd gotten too old. Praise the Lord. But they, they're trying to show me I ain't that old, but I'm old. When it takes you a long time to get out of the bed, you got to throw a leg over the side of the bed and wait till it warm up. <laughs> You old. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Nothing to envy. Nothing to have strife over. We can do business without envy and strife. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We can disagree. And not have envy, nor strive to be present. Amen. But the reason why we walk as men, we say we are spiritual, but then we see that we are walking as men. We need to be spiritual, church. For whereas there is among you envy and strife and division, you are yet you are are ye, ye not calm and walk as men. For while one saith I'm of Apollos, and another said, I am of a, uh, a Paul, and another I am of Apollos. Are ye not calm? Are you not calm? Praise the Lord. We come and we're going to have appointments and I, I, I don't want him. Huh? Praise the Lord. I, I, I don't want him. That's carnality. Hey, hey. That's carnality. Hallelujah. You say you love your brother? You love your sister? It shouldn't make no difference who you get then. See, I don't care if I don't get pointed back. Huh? That's carnality. If you love your brother and your sister, it don't make no difference who you get. Oh, yes. If I came to your white church as your pastor and I'm your brother, Jesus loves me. Amen. Amen. And he's in the corner. And he loves me. 
And if I came to your church, you ought to love me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Huh? Is that right? Spanish speaking person came to your church. You ought to receive him. Huh? Praise the Lord. Oh, it gets tight, don't it? It gets tight. But it's the church of God. And God said that it was a speckled bird, not me. God said all are welcome, not me. Is that right? Praise the Lord. We shouldn't have appointments by color. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. If that's the case, then I'm less than you. Huh? Amen? If that's the case, then we are less than you. Where in the world do you get that black man from? I can only preach what God gives me. All right. James says, for where envy and strife is, there is confusion. Right. Every evil work. You hear that? Where those things exist, every evil work exists there also. We done brought something in the house that ain't in the corner. Right. Amen? We, we brought something in the house that's not in the corner. Right. So if it ain't in the corner, it don't belong in the house. Praise the Lord. You ought to understand, Jews had the same problem with you. They didn't want no Gentiles in. Uh -huh. Come on. Hallelujah. Amen. But, but God changed that. God changed that church. Praise the Lord. I'm glad he changed it. I'm a citizen. A fellow citizen. In the household of God. Hallelujah. With all the saints. Hi, hallelujah. Heir to the same promises. Amen. I got the same rights that you got. Hallelujah. We are all equal in the body of Christ. It ain't no little. We'll get rid of all this envy and strife. Is that right? Yes, sir. Where there's none, sometimes people cause it. I got an opinion, but my opinion don't agree with what went on in the assembly. When the assembly has passed something, And, and, and on my report, it says, do you agree with the assembly recommendations? Whew. And if you're killing them and tearing them down once you leave, because that's not the place to do it. 
And you, you tag that little box and you say, yes, I agree. And all the time you disagree? What'd that make you? A what? Help me, Lord Jesus. Make you a what? Well, I'm going to make you think before you do that report the next time. <laughs> if you're in a disagreement, mark it on that. Mark it on that. I, I'm in disagreement. Because if you keep marking yes and you know you ain't in agreement, you're going to mess around and burn. Hey man, I don't care what kind of license you got in your pocket. Hey man, if you're a bishop, you're just a lying bishop. I'm going to get through and get out y'all way before y'all get mad at me. But listen to what he says. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated. Yes, that's good. You hear that? Amen. Praise the Lord. No matter what we do in the church of God, it should be easily entreated. Because we have the spirit of the church. Amen. There is a spirit of the church. Praise the Lord. Is that right? The spirit of the church is all about submission. Is that right? It's all about submission. We can't submit because we don't trust the corner. Oh, the corner can't take care of his business. We're afraid to submit because we don't trust the corner. You know what? If this is his house and if the house belongs to him, then I need to trust him with his house. Now, if the house don't belong to him, then we don't need to trust him with it. But do you not know there is safety in the corner? That's where our safety is in the corner. Praise the Lord. Everything we do should be off the corner. We should seek the corner. Yes. We should ask the corner. Hallelujah. And we shouldn't do anything until we get an answer from the corner. Hallelujah. It's not a situation that we can't get into that if we submit to the corner that he can't straighten out. Right. Do you believe that? Oh, you don't act like it. He can straighten out any problem, yes, he can. any confusion that arise in the church. If he can't, then he ain't God. If we got a problem that God can't fix that is too hard for him to fix then he ain't God because he told me it wasn't nothing too hard for him mm. 
Mm-hmm. Did he say that? Nothing is too hard for God. We struggle with things because they're too hard for us, but they're not too hard for God. Amen. Amen. If we get out into the mighty deep, you ain't got to worry about drowning. Peter looked out and saw him coming. First they thought it was a ghost, but when they realized who it was, Peter said, Master, can I come? Can I come? Can I come? And the Lord said, come. Praise the Lord. Peter jumped out of the boat. Walking on water. It wasn't too hard for God. It wasn't too hard for God. As long as Peter believed it, it wasn't too hard for him. Praise the Lord. It never got hard for God. It never did. Because he had gave him his word. He gave him his word. Come. Right. What Peter was walking on was his word. Huh? He was walking on his word. Hallelujah. Come on, Peter. Hallelujah. And only when doubt crept in. It's only when the storm rose. And the storm got boisterous. And he took his eyes off the one that told him he could walk on the water. And he looked at the storm. Praise the Lord. We'll say sometimes to us, what in the world am I doing out here? What made me jump out of that boat? And get out here in this water. I can't walk on water. Praise the Lord. But see sometimes God will get you so far away from safety. You can't get back. He done got so far out on the water. He couldn't make it back to the boat. Because he was too scared already. But he had enough sense. To look up. Yes. To look up. The same one that told him to come was the same one that was his safety net. Amen? Praise the Lord. The same one that's telling the church of God to come is the same one that's the church safety net. Hallelujah. Church is not going to drown. Church is not going to go under. Hallelujah. We got to trust the corner. If we truly believe the word, let God be in charge of his church. Amen. Then we won't be confounded. We won't be stumbling at the word through our disobedience. Wherefore, as it is contained in the scripture, behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone. Elect, precious, And he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. Amen. Amen. Unto you therefore which believe he is precious. But unto them which be disobedient. A stone of stumbling. A rock of offense. Even to them which stumble at the word. Being disobedient. Whereunto. Also they were appointed. You only are confounded because you don't believe. And we stumble at the word in disobedience. Praise the Lord. And then we become confounded. We become confused. Praise the Lord. 
See, you, you can never leave this. You, you can't never give this up. You can never walk off from it. Except you start stumbling at the word of God. If you start stumbling, becoming disobedient, you are going to walk off and leave it. Because it won't hold the same meaning to you no more. Hallelujah. Because you're stumbling all over it. Because it won't hold that meaning. Hallelujah. I, I don't want to stumble at the word being disobedient. I don't want to become confound because I'm stumbling all over what I need. Praise the Lord. And that this very thing becomes a rock of offense to you. This word becomes an offense to you. Praise the Lord. I don't, I don't believe that no more. Because you become confused. And you're stumbling in your disobedience. Praise the Lord. It's going to be the church of God. Until the Lord comes back. It's going to be the church of God. Then it's going to turn into his bride. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. He is a stone of stumbling to who? The disobedient. He is a rock of offense to who? The disobedient. They stumble at the word. Who are they? The disobedient. Praise the Lord. If you are disobedient, you fulfill all those scriptures. And he beheld them and said, talking to his disciples, What is this then that is written? The stone which the builders rejected. The same is become the head of the corner. Whosoever shall fall upon that stone shall be broken. Whosoever fall on that stone shall be broken. For whomsoever it should fall, they will ground, grind him to powder. Praise the Lord. Amen. We, we don't want to agitate that stone. Amen. Amen. We don't want to get so far out of line with the corner that the corner got to straighten us up to get us to line up. Praise the Lord. If he falls on us, he'll grind us to powder. Amen. Everything God needs to bring the church to perfection is in the corner. Be careful. Line up with the corner. This is the Lord's doing. God bless you. We are so grateful you chose to worship with us today and join us for this rewind to hear these voices from the past. If you do not know Jesus Christ as your Lord, we encourage you to invite him into your life today. Remember, no matter the circumstances of this life, God is faithful and we can find the hope we are searching for in Him. Join us again tonight as we gather for live worship and encouragement at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. May God bless you, your families, and His people all over this world.